It was interesting, it was in the paper yesterday or today, I think it was today, about Elizabeth Edwards and, and uh, John Edwards uh, and John's affair. And when they got married, she said, the most important thing to me is that you never be unfaithful to me. And they'd been married 30, over 30 years. And she had just laid that out as a, as a spiritual value that was really, really, really important to her. So when she found out, she went into such a fit, not in front of him, but a fit of emotional psychosis in a way. You know, she's vomiting, she's screaming, she's tearing her hair, she's sobbing. And so this is something that it's not, you don't want to use emotion to manipulate somebody. I don't want to use my emotion to make you feel bad. And I think a lot of times couples use emotion to make the other person feel guilty and ashamed and bad. But you have emotion, you are upset, and, and don't just go to your friends and get sympathy. The worst thing you can do is call up all your friends and get sympathy. And believe me, all of them will give it to you because they've only heard your side of the story. <clears throat> Any other questions? Perhaps you can talk about the silent treatment and what's an efficient way to handle that. I like the word treatment. <laughs> Jerry, I think this is a good one for you. Well, I've kind of been brought up a little bit with a philosophy that you know we, we went to chemistry and science and they taught in order to have a fire you had to have a hot temperature you had to have something to burn and you had to uh, have oxygen so I figure that's the same way with having a fight you got to have this you got to have that and you got to have this so if I remove one of the three by not communicating and giving her more firewood to put on the fire then I feel like I have a kind of a neutral stand to stop and uh, rethink out my troops, where they are, where my defense is, where my offense is, if this, if this get-together is going to continue. But usually, if you let it dry down, simmer down, whatever the word you want to use, uh, it works its way out itself. Now, you have your opinion. I forgot the question. <laughs> Silent treatment, that's right. I love the, the saying, silence is golden. And you could turn it to something positive even though it's being given in a negative way. Um, I'm, just, I'm just saying that would be an unusual response because usually we get really mad, then we get verbal, then we want to have, we almost want to get physical. I've considered murdering my husband many times. I'm sure he's considered murdering me. I said, either I'll kill myself. You know, this, this emotion can just be like a rage. So maybe silence is more golden than the rages. But the word treatment is, that's the critical issue. Is it being used to punish? Do not punish anyone. Punishment is in the hands of God. You go to God and ask him to lift the punishment from you so that when you feel punished, it will not feel like you're being punished. Okay. Uh, I think that also the key is to make sure that you're not keeping score. I've met couples that it is like keeping score they think about who won that battle or who won the next battle that is something that we really got to watch there's you're supposed to be working together as a team on the same team so being on the same team and I know Betty talked about um, in one of her marriage classes she's talked about how when she finally figured out how to talk to my dad and say to him I, I, I feel like you're on the basketball court in the game, and I'm on the bench, and you won't let me in the game. But, but it's something like that. It was, it was a, you know, understanding you're on the same team. You're playing together, you're not against each other. And then the other thing to think about is that 
men, um, and um, this is uh, in many of the trainings that Tom and I have been studying, um, men have, uh, they, they think in one thought process at a time. We call it the waffle square. So they have one waffle square thought at a time. They have one waffle square that's an empty box. They have one that's a big sex box. And they have, you know, a couple other waffle squares where they think of things. And they also have a huge box saying, I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, I think they do. I agree with that. They have a... And women think like spaghetti. So uh, Tom and I actually use this in our language as we communicate. So spaghetti is we will change subjects three or four times without left or right turn signals. And they have a hard time keeping up with us. And I used to think that, oh, he, that maybe a man isn't as smart as me. Shame on me for ever thinking that. They're different than me. I need to respect the differences. So what Tom says to me when I go and I, I, I go spaghetti on him is he says, I'm three waffle squares back. And I just understand I went spaghetti and I need to go back and I say, oh, okay, where were you? And I understand that he's much better at grabbing a hold of a problem and focusing on that problem and solving it completely, whereas I go to three or four problems and I'm trying to run them all at once and I don't maybe never get them all complete. So that's the, that's the beauty of a man, is he can get one thing done well, very well, and we're sometimes so scatterbrained as women. So respecting our differences, but also I want to say on the quiet, is that men have a thing where they're trying to solve a problem. And I found it very interesting, they say when they're trying to solve a problem, that sometimes they have to go inside the, their cave into themselves to think about that problem. And sometimes they even have to, then they've been thinking about it so much they need to escape from that problem. They might even need to watch TV or read the newspaper because they're kind of escaping from the problem. And then they'll go back to the problem again and once the problem's resolved, then they can talk. But until then, they may be so much caught in that problem, they may not be able to communicate to you for a while. And us women have a hard time understanding that. So there's a very big difference between men and women that way. But there is a deliberate punishment mode that goes on. And that punishment mode is not healthy. If somebody is punishing you and you know that they're punishing you, then your job is to not feel punished but to continue to have the faith that you're okay. If you begin to feel punished, you're going to get angry, and as you get angry, you're going to see escalation. So it's like hanging on to your faith. I'm going to be okay. This is punishment. It's not about me. It's about them. They don't know how to handle the problem. And it could be either side. Women punish men equally as men punishing women. Okay, another question. I think another thing that couples can do is develop uh, just calm interest. Uh, we have a habit of playing Yahtzee after dinner every night for three games. Well, you... Uh, God's honor, it's two games, it just seems like three. Yeah, that's because I lose all it. No, no, no. But, and it's nice to have the same things that you can, we can, and Betty will sit down and do the crossword puzzle. And I'll pick up the crossword and add to it. And then she gets it back the second time and she adds to it. So it's kind of a mutual activities that we both like doing. It helps our relationship also. And I make sure that a significant number of activities that I do are things my husband would like to do. And he likes games. He likes sports. He likes... And so I gear myself to what I like, but I also gear myself to what he likes. And that's very important because a lot of women say, well, I just hate sports. Well, you just better get over it if your husband likes it because you're going to agree with him that they're good. 